Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. Why is it interesting? Because I said so. No, not really. It's, it's going to turn into an interesting equation and I'm going to present, even though it's not like two approaches, I'll show you two approaches. Anyways, uh, let me make some sense out of this. So we have 2 to the power 3a plus 2 to the power a equals 10. Let 2 to the power a equal x. Then we get the following equation. x cubed plus x equals 10. And I know you what you're thinking. Guess and check, you got it. You got it in 10 seconds, 5 seconds, whatever. Okay, we're not racing, it's okay. But I know you guys are smart and you can get it real quick. So if you kind of think about it, let's pretend that we're thinking about this. You find that x equals 2 is a possible solution. Nice. Okay, that's cool. How am I going to find the other solutions? I can factor this, and there are two ways to factor this. So I'm going to go ahead and show you those two approaches to factor this, and then I'm also going to show you a graph of this. As far as I know, I made a graph. If I didn't, um, I'm sorry, out of time. But anyways, I believe I did. Okay. So let's go ahead and see how we can factor this. I want to put first everything on the same side, so we can make it a full cubic. You can use the cubic formula. Uh, I don't think you want to get into that because this is easily factorable. Look, look at the 10 and look at the x cube and look at the x. I'm thinking, okay, can I break down the 10 into 8 plus 2? Of course. And this is what you get from there. x cubed minus 8 plus x minus 2. Of course, I do know x equals 2 is a solution, but you could also see that without finding that x equals 2 is a solution. Hopefully, you, you can kind of test it out. You know, it's not too hard. So now we're going to subtract. Subtract. Okay, great. We're going to factor x cubed minus 8. Uh, difference of two cubes. So x minus 2 multiplied by x squared plus 2x plus 4. And then this is just 1 times x minus 2. And obviously x minus 2 is a common factor because x equals 2 is a solution, factor, theorem, whatever. And now we're going to add these two. Okay. x squared plus 2x plus 4 plus 1, x squared plus 2x plus 5. Awesome. Guess what? This equation, the second one, the second factor, no real solutions. Okay. So what am I going to do? Nothing. It doesn't have any real solutions. So it, if it doesn't, then you can kind of work with complex numbers. Well, it's, it's not easy. It's not hard to solve. Like you can kind of write this as this. And then from here, you get the following, right? And then you can say, hey, x plus 1 is equal to plus minus 2i. And x is going to be negative 1 plus minus 2i. Okay, here we go. Complex solutions. What am I going to do with that? x is equal to what? x is equal to 2 to the power a. If 2 to the power a is equal to this, then good luck with that, right? So you kind of have to log both sides, but you're going to log a complex number, so on and so forth. Anyways, too painful. Let's go ahead and go with this. If x is equal to 2, x is equal to 2, that means 2 to the power a is equal to 2, which means a is equal to 1. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and the, um, take a look at the other approach. You can also use this method to factor this. And I know it's not very easy to see, but you can break down the for, uh, x into minus 4x plus 5x. It's all about adding and subtracting things bec uh, to make it factorable by grouping. So you can take out an x, x squared minus 4. Do you see what I see? Hopefully. That is difference of two squares. Yes. If you said that, you guessed it right. x plus 2, x minus 2, 5 times x minus 2. Of course, x minus 2 is a factor, so everything works. And we get x squared plus 2x plus 5 directly. More directly, sort of. But anyways, this gives us x equals 2. And 2 is 2 to the power a. And this gives us a equals 1. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. Did I make a graph? Oops, I didn't. Looks like I didn't. But here's the idea. Since this uh, function, okay, let's take a look. So we have x cubed plus x minus 10. y equals that. You can go ahead and differentiate it. y prime is equal to 3x squared plus 1. Set it equal to 0. Uh oh, it doesn't have a maximum or minimum. Of course, it's not a surprise, but it does have one x intercept. And you can kind of look at the second derivative, 6x. This means that for positive x values, it's going to be concave up. It's going to go through here. And for negative values, it's going to be concave down. So it's kind of, it's going to look like this. And that is the graph of it. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.